Okay, in this video, I'd like to show you how to get the general solution to a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients. And I've written one there. Before you watch this video, make sure, well, I, I would suggest that you watch my video on the characteristic equation, my video just introducing differential equations, and my video on the general and particular solutions for differential equations. If you, I'm not going to do the theory here really, so um, you, you should watch that before you watch this. Alright, so we're talking about constant coefficients. So notice, of course, that you must have a coefficient of 1 here. And if you don't, divide across by whatever. So if this was 3, you'd have to divide a by 3 and b by 3 as well. And maybe call them new, 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 uh, new, new, um, new constants. Alright, so let's see how do we solve this equation. Well, the first thing we do is we get its characteristic equation. Alright, so I've talked about that in a previous video. So the characteristic equation for this is going to be equal to lambda squared plus a lambda plus b is equal to zero. The next thing we need to do is to solve this characteristic equation. So we solve it by going minus a plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is in this case a squared minus 4, 1, b over 2a. So it's 2 in this case. And this is... This is the, uh, that is the, they, they're the roots of your, your characteristic equation. They'll give you two roots. They'll give you lambda 1 and they'll give you lambda 2. Now, in the case where a squared is greater than, in this case, 4b, well, then you're going to get two real numbers. So we'll say lambda 1 might be equal to 4 and lambda 2 might be equal to 9. All right? And we'll say they are, what are they? They are real. That's very important. They're real numbers. So we got two numbers. All right. Now, what do we do? What is the general solution for our equation? I'm going to tell you that the general solution is as follows: You're going to have uh, you're going to have y1 is equal to. Now you still have two. This is this the gen, the the most general way of getting your two solutions. So y1 is going to be e, e, e to the something x times well, it's a constant, which I'm going to call c1 times the cosine of something times x plus c2 times the sine of something times x. And the same for y2. y2 is the exact same, except the constants would maybe be c3 and c4, any constants, it doesn't really matter. Call them a, b, call them r, f, p, q, whatever you like. So that is the general way of writing a single solution now, a single solution. These, this is a particular solution. This is a particular solution. This is the general way of getting a particular solution. This isn't necessarily the general solution yet. Remember, of course, y gen, the general solution is equal to y1 plus y2. We're only getting y1 in this case, and this is the, the most general way of writing y1. And it's the same way of writing, the general way of writing y2, but it's not the general solution of the equation. I hope, uh, I hope uh, the difference there is clear. So I'm going to define two more parameters. I'm going to define alpha, and I'm going to define beta, like so. And that is the best way, or the, we'll say, the most general way of writing this equation, where alpha corresponds to the real components, and beta corresponds to the imaginary. So, what are they? If you solve this, look, we went back to up to the roots of our characteristic equation. In the case where we get, we'll say, constants. So the constants, we'll say, in this case, I got lambda, is equal to one, lambda 1 is equal to 1 and lambda 2 is equal to 9. Both of these are the real numbers. So in this case, in this case here, right, in this case, because they're, they're both real numbers, here alpha is equal to 4 and beta is equal to 0 and here alpha is equal to 9 and beta is equal to 0. So look, the cos of naught is 1 and the sine of naught is naught. So you're just going to get an exponential solution. And the answer for this one in this case is that y1 is equal to e to the 4x. If you do the same thing with lambda 2, you're going to get y2 is e equal to e to the 9x. And the general solution, y gen, is equal to y1 plus y2 is equal to e to the 4x 
plus e to the 9x. Alright, that is the general solution to this differential equation. And it was made up by solving the characteristic equation. In the characteristic equation, you got two roots. All right. The most general way of getting a particular solution of this equation is saying e to the alpha x plus a constant times uh, a constant times a cosine beta x plus a constant times sine beta x. Alpha corresponds to the real solutions of this this equation here, and beta corresponds to the imaginary components of this. And in the case where you get, we'll say, constants, of course, they're real, and then betas go away, and you're just left with exponential solutions. But what happens, of course, if you have, if you have an imaginary component? What do you do then? And it's very straightforward. So let's say, let us say that in this case, in this case, a squared is less than 4b. You're going to get an imaginary solution. So if that's the case, you need to bring out in your imaginary number. So it's just going to be the following. Multiply by iota here. Just bear with me now and I'll redraw this. And we're going to get the square root of negative a squared plus 4b. Like that. All I did was take out my iota and change the signs. It changed the signs inside my square root. This is now a positive number because we know that 4b is greater than a squared. That's a positive number times iota, which is, of course, the square root of negative 1. And this will give us, this will still give us lambda 1 and lambda 2. All right? So in, in the case where we use lambda 1, all right, so I'm going to say lambda 1 in this case is, we'll say, plus. How do we get the first solution, y1? Well, we need to define alpha, and we need to define beta. So... Alpha, in this case, is very straightforward. Alpha is going to be equal to negative a over 2. And beta is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to the square root of 4b minus a squared over 2. Not, not iota. It's just the real component and the imaginary component. All right? And in that case, let's apply it. So y1 is equal to e to the negative ax over 2 outside of the cos and I'm not going to write this I'm just going to say that well actually there was a constant there I need to put in my constants they're very important Let's say c1 times the cosine of beta x plus c2 times the sine of beta x that is the particular solution y1 if you, if you take the negative here, you're going to get the particular solution, y2. And then you get the general solution of the equation by adding the two particular solutions. All right, now, I hope that doesn't really confuse it. I think it's quite straightforward, but mm -hmm. that's just me. So look, if there are any questions, please ask me. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.